So let's go on to the biggest, three biggest mistakes I see um, when it comes to um, women trying to tackle their imposter syndrome. So mistake number one is thinking I'm number, nobody special. Um, so if you answer yes to this one, if you resonate with this one, it does not matter how successful you are, how many awards you've got, how many testimonials, how many promotions you've had, what your salary level is. Um, and it's true that your um, your peers, they see you as amazing. Um, they see you in high regard. They even may consider you brilliant. But if you're really honest, you're not one of them. You just don't get it. And deep down, you know you are a fake. You know you are an imposter. You know you are a fraud. And to the outside world, you're accomplished, you're capable, you're brilliant. Um, but secretly, you're worrying that you're barely competent and you're about to get found out. And when you do nail the pitch um, or do something amazing in your role, you know, you pull it off, which you almost always do, uh, you just see yourself as lucky and never deserving of the reward and people around you would probably be shocked to know that you lie awake at night uh, worrying about this stuff worrying that you're going to get found out and if you resonate with this one you're already successful so not necessarily a ceo or top of your game um but the point is is that you've achieved some measure of success in your career thus far essentially something to feel fraudulent about something that you've set yourself insanely high standards um about and it's estimated that about 70% or actually i heard yesterday 82% of women um struggle with imposter syndrome it's huge absolutely huge and that comes from a study from psychologist gail matthews um and it is men um, and it is women and it is everything in between. Um, but the studies were first done on women in the 1970s. Um, and if you fall under this category that I'm nobody special, you be convinced that other people's uh, praise and recognition is undeserved. You talk, chalk your success up to chance, um, charm, your connections, whatever it is. And you're unable to feel deserving or joy or relax around your successes. And you continu continually doubt your ability to repeat them. And when you do succeed, you feel relief rather than joy. And you might say things like, I got lucky. I was in the right place at the right time. It's because they like me. If I can do it, anybody can. They must let anybody into this thing. Uh, somebody must have made a terrible mistake. I'm seeing some smiles and some nodding going on at these ones. Uh, I had a lot of help. It was a team effort. I had connections. They're just being nice. They felt sorry for me. So hands up. Who resonates with mistake number one? Cool. OK, let's move on to number two, which is listening to that imposter and then playing small. Letting your imposter, uh, your saboteur, that little voice on your shoulder, have the upper hand and have a say in how you show up. And when you listen to your imposter, you can end up fitting in. You can end up sacrificing who you are um, and what you love to do and what you would love to do, what you dream of in order to be accepted or to be acceptable. Uh, you can end up settling for the life that you feel that you deserve rather than the one that you dream of. And it can mean that you're too scared to be real and to be vulnerable uh, and to make real connections and show who you really are, you know, to be authentically you. And it can feel, feel uh, shameful and inauthentic and just is such a waste of who you can be. Um, like that story I shared about my first business, I was running that business because that's all I felt that I was deserving, that all I felt I was worthy of having. Um, and I lost out on so much more joy, so many years of joy when I could be doing what I'm doing today. If only I'd been brave enough back then to, 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 um, to reprogram my imposter. And if you listen to that imposter and let it win, you can take criticism to heart, um, even the slightest helpful constructive criticism and lie awake, beating yourself up about it. And it probably is nothing to do with you. If you've received feedback or criticism, it's usually somebody else's shit, but your imposter doesn't see it as such. 
Um, or how about making a mistake? Who's made a mistake? I make mistakes all the time. And a few years ago, um, I made a mistake when I was setting up this masterclass. I sent the wrong email out. And a few years ago, I'd have been lying awake, raking myself over the coal, thinking, oh, my God, you just need to cancel the whole thing. Who the heck? They're going to think you're awful and unprofessional. I won't listen to you. You know how the mind track goes. But because I'm able to go through this system, it's like snap, right? back into it I understand what's happening here I understand what the triggers are I don't need to let it stop me so who here resonates with mistake number two listening to that imposter fabulous self-awareness is the first step okay step number three sorry mistake number three is self-sabotaging self-sabotaging is when you have a success and for a moment it feels great but for many reasons we're going to go into in a moment um you are not comfortable with that level of success so you do something to self-sabotage it um and get back within your comfort zone it's like have you heard the stories of lottery winners they win millions um and then go and blow it all within a year and end up back on um back on benefits because they're not comfortable with that level of wealth it just doesn't compute with their programming um, this is an upper limit program uh, problem. If you've ever read the book, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks, he goes into it in fantastic detail. And I really recommend it. But it's about you've got a um, an inner thermostat, an upper limit and a lower, lower limit of what you are willing to tolerate, um, what your comfort zone is. You see it a lot with weight as well and weight fluctuations. But what it does is it creates a cycle of evidence when you self-sabotage, because the next time you can go, oh, see, I knew it wasn't I knew it wasn't worth bothering or I knew it would feel horrible if I would do the thing. And then next time you don't even bother and your imposter wins and you get to stay in your comfort zone, even if it is not serving you. Who here knows they are self-sabotage? You see, the major thing, and this is this is actually the biggest lesson I want to impart on you today. The major thing with imposter syndrome, it, it's just your mind trying to keep you safe. We are right back to cave people times. It's that whole flight, fight or freeze mechanism. It's just your mind trying to keep you safe. And safety to your mind is familiarity. I want you to hear that because it's really important. Safety to your mind is familiarity. And 4% of your brain is conscious. You deciding to press the button, you deciding to take a drink, that's the 4%, which means that 96% is subconscious and is going on below the surface. And a lot of that is running on automatic programming. And the majority of that automatic programming is designed to keep you alive. That's your primary directive. It's to keep you alive. Stuff like uh, not remembering to have to breathe while you're asleep um remembering to blink we don't want to have to remember to do that consciously because it's all part of our automatic programming to keep you alive i was trying to explain this to my to my eight-year-old the other day he said would i die if i held my breath and i was like no because your your nervous system would kick in and, and make you start to breathe um so yeah automatic programming uh it's not designed to keep you happy or successful or wealthy or self-actualized or any of that stuff it's just designed to keep you safe and safety to your brain is familiarity. Um, think of it like water running down a hill. It's always going to be trying to find that path of least resistance. And so whenever you step outside your comfort zone and try and do something new, that automatic programming, that old story, that narrative, that imposter is going to step in to try and self-sabotage, to bring somebody up outside your path, um, to it's got so many tools and tricks at its disposal, which again, we're going to go into in a moment. Um, it will try and do anything it possibly can to stop you doing the new and scary thing and bring you back into your comfort zone, even if it's not serving you. Enter imposter syndrome. And that is why you can't just snap out of it and decide to do something different. Um, willpower doesn't work because it's like stretching a rubber band. It can only go so far because it snaps back in and goes back to the original programming. But it is absolutely possible to reprogram it. And that's what we're going to talk about today.